Well, I think that the initial seeds of the project was when um, I had been working on my guitar playing a lot and Zach and I had, my brother Zach is an amazing jazz musician so I'm learning a lot from him and we had planned to have like a just for fun kind of jam band where we just did some instrumentals kind of in the style of like the meters, Medeski, Martin and Wood, that kind of stuff. And then we had also been doing outside songwriting for whatever artist was looking for songs at the time. And I was like, let's just combine these two concepts and just write, write songs for this kind of funk project. So it was just real kind of organic. Yeah, that was, that was one thing that was really um, exciting and to, to get to know new people that I'd met different guys from the kind of songwriting circuit like Kevin Griffin from Better Than Ezra and these guys, uh, Sam and Sluggo, these are kind of New York um, producers and songwriters and um, this Tim Pagnotta who's in Sugar Cult and he writes a lot of cool songs for like Neon Trees and Pepper and um, so I had kind of met these guys and, and just writing with them was a whole new experience. I, every time you collaborate with someone new, you, you learn. And um, so I picked up a lot of new tricks, a lot of new um, funny little phrases like uh, Tim would say, when we get to the, the bridge and it gets quiet, that's the panty drop section. We, <laughs> you know, just the vernacular that I picked up through that. Um, uh, through that process was cool and then the musicians they've worked with so many different people like um, Gary Novak the drummer um, goes straight from like um, a, a, a huge Latin band to um, working on kind of a rock groove to, uh, to jazz I mean his main thing was working with Chick Corea and uh, so he has such a wide range of, of styles and anything I would suggest he was right there and so it was, it was a great learning experience. Well, I guess um, I, I'm not really very good at picking singles, so I kind of leave that up to, uh, to management and, and the radio team that we put together. But I, I guess Supernatural, it's just a lot of people connected with that right, right away because it has, the, the melody is based on, well, the, the chords first are um, based on the Pachelbel um, the classical song uh, Canon in D, which is often played at weddings, is kind of associated. So it's a romantic song right there. And then um, when I was first writing the song, I didn't make that connection. I just heard some cool chords that these guys, Sam and, and Sluggo, that I was writing the song with, had sent me. And then once I realized it was this classical song, then I started quoting the melody in the guitar solo and stuff. So. It's, it's a bit of familiar because it's a song that's been embraced for hundreds of years, um, but then having it with kind of a, a very organ heavy kind of jazz band, but then it's a reggae groove, so it's, it's a new combination um, for me and people were just connecting with it, so I decided that would be the single. Yeah, I think that the song, uh, The Dreamer, really uh, personifies the, my shadow pages, which is kind of expressing a new side of myself that's coming out of the shadows. And the, the song, The Dreamer, um, you know, yeah, I am a dreamer, a good-natured schemer, a chronic make-believer. Um, you know, I realize that my, my head is in the clouds a lot of time, and it, I just have this artist mentality that's a lot of times um, somewhat irresponsible and uh, I never never plan on a rainy day so just kind of revealing these things about my personality that I, I'm realizing makes it a very personal song and um, so that that one is definitely came from the heart yeah I think um, there's you know there's hints of this kind of style um, at certain songs like there's a couple of kind of jazzy punk songs on grassroots um, so I, I think 311 fans, some some of them will enjoy it, um, but it's it's a definitely it's a more of a keyboard oriented sound. The Hammond B3 and the piano are really featured, so it's it's different enough, um, and it's not you know moshing music. It's not heavy. There's not distortion guitars, so it's a little bit more. Um, chill. Everyone says that when they're giving me feedback, like, I love the chill vibe, you know, so it's, it's, not, it's not arena rocking songs like 311 is. It's more of a, you know, small club kind of fun, light kind of thing. Yeah, you know, the What Have You Records label was something that I um, started to put out the um, 
first three uh, 311 records, and two of which only went to cassette. One of them actually made it to CD, which in 1991 was like the biggest deal to us. We made a CD. Um, and so, you know, I was kind of like our one employee at the record label back then, taking boxes of tapes to the local stores around Omaha, sending them to labels, trying to get a deal and managers and everything. And, um, so it was, I was hands-on then, and now I, I've been away from that for a really long time. And um, this is just a kind of a, a smaller um, organic project. So having my own label and you know hiring a publicist, finding the distribu distributor, and um, getting the radio team. That me and my manager have really been, you know, the management kind of becomes the label when you're doing your own label. So I'm dumping a lot of stuff on his lap and he's just doing great at it. So it's been a lot of fun to uh, be hands-on again after not doing that for a long time. Yeah, I guess um, my latest dubstep favorite is Dada Life. Um, Cruella, I mean, there's, um, there's a lot of good ones and I usually just get one song at a time instead of getting right into a particular artist. But um, I wouldn't say that I would go full on dubstep. I think it's just gonna take a step towards more modern production where on my shadow pages, everything that you hear there was on instruments that in existed by 1975. It's all like jazz guitars, piano, organs, Wurlitzer, clavinet, everything that there's nothing modern on there. And so I think that my next thing is getting into more modern beats and slightly more production, um, modern production style. But um, I don't know, it, it, it's kind of, I'm interested to see how it comes out. You know what I mean? It just kind of evol evolves on its own. Um, but currently, you know, we're working on the 311 record, which we've slated to come out around 311 day, on 311 day, which is either ballsy or stupid to announce it before we've even recorded it. But we're recording it now and it's it's an amazing um, group of, of songs. So I don't know, I think it's kind of like a put out my own record and put out a 311 record and then maybe my own and just, I, I realized that um, with having this kind of more do-it-yourself approach, there's, you don't have to wait and have like a major label cycle that takes a long time. I can put out more music more often and that's just, uh, you know, more, to more tunes for the people.